Hello, college algebra students. Uh, we are down the home stretch now. This is our last standard. Uh, there's really only three lessons out of the book that we will be studying with this last standard. Uh, so we're nearing the end. Keep after it. I want to talk to you a little bit about lesson 9.1. Uh, if you've read through that, I'm not going to require you to read through the whole lesson. There are a few things that I'll point out as we go. Uh, I'm trying to narrow it down to really the most essential and most important things. Uh, but this, uh, you've already looked at the binder intro page where I kind of give some um, inst or some basic overview of, of what we're trying to do in the standard. Uh, you can also look at the beginning of chapter 9 in the textbook, and that does kind of a nice little overview as well. All right. So we're taking these functions, and we're going to talk about, uh, in this lesson, transforming them. So think back to geometry, rotations, reflections, translations, those kinds of things of how we move figures, uh, if you recall studying those things. So we do the same thing with functions. And one of the things that we're going to have to get used to is some notation with this. So that'll be part of my explanation here. So I hope that's clear. It looks kind of fuzzy in my uh, computer here. I'm not sure why, but we'll hope it's okay on your end. So what I've done here, um, I just had this first example ready. I'm going to take a function here, and I'm not going to tell you the exact equation of this function. I'm just going to say it's f of x. And what we're going to do is we're going to transform f of x somehow from this to this. Okay, so this is a new uh, f of x. I'll explain more of that notation here in a second, but my first question to you is how did this function transform from here to here? Right? And I hope your answer would be that it was a reflection over the y-axis. If your y interest or sorry, your y-axis was the line of reflection, and you just did a, a reflection over that you would get this thing, okay? So this is just a reflection over the y-axis. Or if you wanted to say the actual equation of that, reflection over the line x equals 0. That's that vertical line there, okay? Um, so that's important to you to, to recognize the visual, the graph of that, okay? But the other thing I want you to recognize is the notation of that. So I'm going to create a little bit of room down here. So if this was f of x, what changed about f of x here? Okay. And I'm going to demonstrate that by drawing in, I'm just going to pick this kind of um, local min maximum point. And we're going to say, all right, think about that x value there. It's probably a negative, it's, well, we know it's a negative value, and then produces that. Now, notice in this case that if we put that x value here, that would give us that same y value, right? So that same f of x value would be produced, but what did we do to get to this x value from this one? Well, it's the opposite of whatever this was. So whatever this x value was, again, it'd be negative. This would be the opposite of that on the other side of the x-axis. So we get the same f value, or sorry, the same function value, the same y value, if we put in the opposite input, okay? So if you simply pl plug in the opposite input, um, that would give you this new graph. It would reflect your original one over the y-axis, okay? So understanding changing your input, putting a negative in front of your x here, that's going to demonstrate this, all right? <clears throat> all right, let's try the next one. Uh, maybe I can keep the same one. Yep. <clears throat> Okay, so same question. How do we go from this to this? And hopefully it makes sense that we reflected it 
over in this case the x-axis okay uh, that comes down here and that point flips it over okay so this right here to go from here to here is a reflection over the x-axis which or you could say over the line y equals zero that's the equation of the horizontal line all right now what's that look like in function notation if this start out as f of x let's take that same x value here okay and this time we're not going to change where that x value is we're going to keep it there but notice what happened to the y value the function value it went from up here to down here it's still the same distance from the x-axis it's just that in this case that f of x is negative so it's negative f of x the input stays the same but you get the opposite when you for the output all right and that that's true for every point on this function this is the general notation for explaining how to get a function that would be a reflection over the x-axis all right what I'd like you to do, well, let me go through a couple examples quick. So what if, oh, I shouldn't have erased that one. It was going to be my. What if I said this original, it's not a very good graph. What if I said this original graph had uh, an equation f of x equals x cubed plus 2. Okay, let's say that's our equation, right? So to get to get the the one where we flipped over the y-axis, remember that? It was like this. Again, sorry, my drawings aren't great. Remember how we said all we need to do was change the input to the opposite? So if we do that, we put negative x in for x and then simplify. Well, Look at this. What is negative x to the third power? Think about that you're taking negative x times negative x times negative x. Because there's an odd number of negatives there, the result is going to be a negative and then x cubed. Okay, And so if you were to check that, that's this equation here. Okay, Negative x cubed plus 2. Still has that same y-intercept of plus 2. But in this case, a negative x cubed, all right? Now, what if we looked at the one where we reflected over the x-axis? Something like that. Okay. And we said the function way of doing that was that you put it outside of it. Well, how do we... How do we Basically, this is a negative 1 times that f of x. So a negative 1 times everything there in that function. So negative x cubed minus 2. So notice, now our y-intercept is a negative 2. And we have our negative x cubed, which, again, kind of flipped it. So it's coming down first as we move from left to right. That's our equation. All right. <clears throat> I would strongly encourage you going to page 541 and 542. Those, those have some nice tables, some nice explanations, and a few example problems to reinforce what I just explained to you here. Okay, I have one last thing to show you for this video. <clears throat> Symmetry probably a word that you've worked with since third grade all right symmetry means that something is uh, if it has a line of symmetry you could flip it over that line of symmetry and it would be the same from one side to the other right a person's face has symmetry right if you draw a line right down the middle this half is the same as this half you can think of lots of things that have symmetry um, one of those uh, is functions okay so again I know I'm not very creative with different functions today, but sometimes using the same one can help really focus in on the new concept. So here we go. When we take this and wait, 
so the ones that I already showed you had symmetry, right? When we flipped it over the y-axis, uh, back up, sorry. Um, we're going to look at symmetry more tomorrow in the lesson. I got a little bit ahead of myself. Um, symmetry is going to have to do with uh, seeing if you can either reflect or find a line of symmetry where it's the same on one side as the other. Just notice here, this one would not have a line of symmetry. If you flipped it over, it's not the exact same as what it started as. So I probably should have waited on that. But maybe just hold that thought for tomorrow. Okay. This is the other thing I wanted to say. <clears throat> the other type of change or transformation that you're going to focus on is translations where you just slide it up or down or left and right. So I hope it makes sense if I have something like this and if I was a better drawer that would help. How do we go from this one to this one? Well, we just took our function and if this was f of x, this is f of x. Looks like we just went down some amount, okay? If you move vertically, it's just an add or subtract outside of your function, after the function, okay? If if you move left and right, so if I take this and translate it to the right, that's going to change the inside of your function, the input, okay? And if you move it to the right, it's going to be minus. If you move it to the left, it's going to be plus. You can think about why that is um, when you're doing your homework and your examples. Um, so that's all I wanted to tell you today. Uh, get to work on your homework, and then have a great weekend. We'll see you again Monday.